Hey guys, my name is Sean Sean. I sell art on SeanSean.co and special on eBay. Today we're going to review The Last Vermeer. So The Last Vermeer is an hour and 57 minutes, a little bit over the hour and a half, but there was a lot of character development, so you needed to kind of fully wait that film out. Director is Dan Friedkin. Uh, actors are Gary Pierce as Han Van Meegeren, the forger. Plays Bang, plays Captain Joseph Piller. Vicky Kreeps, uh, Kreps, plays Mina Holmgren, is the assistant to the artist. Roland Muller plays Esper Decker, kind of this um, local Dutch police detective, kind of counterbalance with Captain Joseph Piller. Well, Alex de Klerks is actually the detective. <laughs> the Esper is um, this assistant to Captain Joseph Piller. So the story is, at the end of the war, it's 1945, the Allies are quickly trying to find all the stolen artwork before it disappears and gets sold all over the place that the Nazis took from the Jews. And so in this salt mine, they uncover this huge art stash from Goering, who is trying to hide out the art while he disappears and hopefully he protects his artwork somehow. You know, desperate last measures. Inside one of the car train cars is this painting and they pull out the painting and it's from the very famous Vermeer, who only did 30 works in his lifetime, but during the 20s and 30s, as the Nazis came to power, these um, Vermeers started popping up all over the place. So there were six new Vermeers found in the 20s, so it was very suspicious, right? There was 250 years, there's no Vermeers found, all of a sudden there's six in one year. <laughs> six in a couple of years, right? So they find this painting, they connect it back to this one art dealer, and the original supplier is Han van Meergeren, so he looks like an art dealer. The police suspect, and also the American forces suspect, that Van Meergeren is actually selling stolen Jewish artwork to the Nazis, so it's like the worst case scenario for you know, being a collaborator with the Nazis is actually you're stealing the artwork from the Jews and helping the Nazis sell it, right? So he becomes under a high suspect and, you know, he looks like he's going to be shot, right, for sure. So he has really desperate measures to prove his innocence. And the thing is, he's actually a forger, but he has to prove that he's a forger. How do you do that, right? So that's kind of the crux of the story. Basically, there's some really great sets and costumes that really set the tone of the 1945 haircuts, costumes you know, taking a train through a bombed out city. So you get the real feel of how desperate the public had become under the war as things were bombed and destroyed and people are just barely getting by after the war ends. And at the same time, you have this great contrast with the artist, Han, living up the high life. He's got all kind of whiskey, imported whiskeys. He's painting paintings. He's obviously a very rich man, making a lot of money. He has lived this great extravagant lifestyle under the Nazi period and now still living that way. And so it's very suspicious, you know, where he got all this money from and his connection with this supposedly Nazi art. There's also this really cool showdown between this Dutch underground Captain Joseph Piller with the local Dutch police and the local Dutch police. Maybe they work with the Nazis, you don't know. So it's kind of like this, you know, the real allies and this guy was in the resistance versus the local ground police. There's a lot of tension there. So that's kind of a really fun play. And it plays out between the suspect, you know, who's going to get the suspect and they're kind of tossing and turning. And eventually it ends up the prosecutor gets the victim and it looks like they're going to take him to court and just shoot him right afterwards. So it looks pretty dour for the suspect, especially one of his friends that's connected to the work is already shot. So now do they have a bunch of holes in the you know, story of his collaboration, how it was done. And so that kind of sets up the stage for the court trial. You know, they have to bring in a painting or something to prove it because all the witnesses that had sold the art before that were expert witnesses are like, no, this is a legit painting. We, we verified this with chemicals. There's no way to beat the chemical process. And so they have kind of a surprise, you know, you're wondering how they're going to get out of it, right? Another really cool subplot is with the women behind the scenes with the men. There's one woman with Captain Joseph Piller. He has his wife. But during the war, since he's Jewish, he splits off and joins the resistance because if he stays, he'll be he'll be shot anyway or sent to the concentration camps. And his wife's struggling to get by, so she has to um, saddle up with this uh, German officer and sleep with him and kind of get information for the resistance. But then that creates a real bitterness in the marriage afterwards, resentment. It's, you know, is Joseph going to put that back together? Is he not going to put it back together? So this is kind of one of the driving forces for his investigation. And so this kind of gets settled by the case itself in a way. So it's a nice subplot connected to the movie and it kind of gives a more richer story. At the same time, you have the assistant of Han, she's sleeping with him or maybe not. 
she's married as well and then his ex-wife is like in paris or something so it's just like kind of like this guy lives a wild lifestyle right during the war very much in contrast with this other guy you know the captain he had to suffer terribly and <laughs> his wife had to sleep with german officers just to get by so it's a really terrible life versus this the other guy he just cheats on his wife and doesn't give a crap right so it has kind of that fun contrast as well in the book, it's a little different than they shoot in the film. In the book, it's based off the real story, at least as far as I know. And in the courtroom, the way he proves he's not a forger, he actually paints the painting. So in the film, they kind of do a little differently, I think in the sense they do show him painting here and there, but they don't really show like a full painting being painted because in the courtroom, I think it took him maybe four or five hours painting solid, which even if you time lapse that, you might get five, 10 minutes, which is gonna be a terrible thing. They'd never do time lapses in Hollywood films. So it's kind of like you get into a real quandary because the painting is a really slow process and if you film it at normal speed <laughs> it is going to take five hours right or at least an hour so you can't just add on an hour of the film to show him really physically painting the other challenge is the actor is probably not going to be able to paint at the style that level he could obviously learn to paint like say picasso cubism you could probably copy that pretty well and not take too much effort to learn that style at least for a movie filming rights but to do van Meer, it's just impossible i mean that's just a really high level talent and then to add acting on top of it there's you're not going to find that person probably it'd be one in a million i mean you could find it but i think the actor does a pretty adequate job i mean they're probably slicing back and forth between a painter with very similar hands as an expert painter and then him painting so they're kind of switching back and forth so you see like oh there's a painting coming about looks like he's painting it so i think with the editing it works pretty well i don't really see the difference some films you'll see the difference like smoking the bandit you can tell the girls not driving when they zoom out but that was the tech they had in the 70s right so they work with what they had yeah i just overall i like the sets and the nice story put together it is a challenge because it's just a kind of a court case and it would be you know there really is maybe like a 15 minute film and they have to expand it to a full film so you add the backstories of the women and subplots and kind of the competition between the captain and the local detective you add a lot of tension there so it adds makes the story much richer you know i don't know what else you could add you could add more of the story with goring actually buddy buddy palling with van meer with han but they have that a little bit so i think they probably covered as much as you want to cover and they have this really side twist in the end it kind of throws the whole story it was like well did he work for the good guy or not for the good guy right <laughs> So it's pretty interesting. So at least a little bit open-ended. I mean, the ending seemed to me like it was gonna be very, it seemed kind of long, like they could have cut it right after the court scene. Instead, they kind of had like this after story, which I guess makes sense. I don't know if you need it, but it definitely adds more to the story, so to say, and kind of fills out that story. It's only like another minute of film, so, but it seems kind of long because it's like a long tail end. But overall, I think it's a pretty good film. Hope you guys like it. Give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, you can subscribe below. And I'll see you in the next movie. Thanks for watching, guys.